Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to provide a biased ranking of all the passes by difficulty on the John Muir Trail if you are hiking northbound or Novo. I hiked the John Muir Trail in the summer of 2021 and it took me 13 days to get from Whitney Portal all the way to Yosemite Valley and along the way I hiked all 11 of these mountain passes. I took into account all the factors, you know, kind of weather, pack weight, um, how far I was in the trip, how acclimatized I was uh, before making this list. I also have a video that has an unbiased ranking of these passes and you definitely want to check that out. Um, in that video, I crunched the numbers and sort of tried to figure out objectively which, which pass is the hardest. But in this video, it's based purely upon my experience. All right, let's get into it. Coming in at number 11, the easiest pass on the John Muir Trail is Island Pass. Honestly, this barely counts as a pass. It's less than two miles long, gains less than 500 feet. The scenery, uh, Mount Banner and Thousand Island Lake are beautiful, but it is just not difficult by any stretch of the mind. It's over before you even start. Coming in at number 10, we have Cathedral Pass. Cathedral Pass really isn't that long, really doesn't gain all that much elevation. Cathedral Pass is also the lowest pass on the John Muir Trail coming in below 10,000 feet. So all those factors um, make it pretty easy. Also the scenery around Cathedral Pass, uh, namely Cathedral Peak and the lakes are really, really beautiful. So you have great things to look at. And if you're hiking northbound, this is the last pass of the trail. So you're definitely in shape. Your pack is getting a little lighter. And um, for all those reasons, it really isn't that difficult. Coming in at number nine, we have Donahue Pass. Donahue Pass is the boundary of Yosemite National Park, which takes you to the northern terminus of the trail. And honestly, Donahue Pass just really isn't that bad. You know, you're pretty far into your hike at this point, so you're, you're feeling pretty good, you're in shape, you're acclimatized. It's really not that long, you know, coming in at about 3.7 miles. So all these factors just came together to really not make it that difficult of a pass. Coming in at number eight, we have Mather Pass. Mather Pass really isn't that serious. Uh, it's really not that long and doesn't gain a ton, a ton of vert between the South Fork of the Kings River and the actual top of the pass. The other reason why I didn't rank Mather Pass as being very strenuous is because it's beautiful. I was really enamored by the scenery on both sides, the upper basin to the south, and then the uh, Palisade crest to the north, and just seeing you know Split Mountain, Norman Clyde Peak, Middle Palisade, all of those. I was really just looking around the whole time and it didn't make the pass feel all that difficult. Coming in at number seven was Forester Pass. Uh, this really surprised me because I was actually expecting Forester Pass to be a little harder, but it really just felt like all bark and no bite, to be honest. Um, Forester Pass is the highest pass of the John Muir Trail, coming in uh, somewhere between 13,100 and 13,200 feet, depending on the map or the sign that you look at. Um, well, the last little bit definitely gains and the trail is a little rough. It really wasn't as bad as I was expecting. It, it doesn't look like there is going to be a trail. You kind of approach it, you see the little notch that's the pass and you're like, where am I going? Trail takes you there. It's really beautiful once you get up there on the Kings Kern Divide, seeing the Kern River Canyon, Mount Tyndall to the south, and then the uh, peaks to the north are also gorgeous. Coming in at number six, we have Silver Pass. Um, Silver Pass was a little harder than I was expecting it to be. Um, I was pretty deep into the trail at this point and I think I just really underestimated it. The middle section of Silver Pass going from Pocket Meadow for the next mile or two is very steep. I was very surprised. The trail is steep. There's a lot of really big steps along the way that took a lot of energy out of me, which is why I'm ranking this pass at number six. Um, but once you kind of do that steep section in the middle, it mellows out. Um, you're a little exposed. You're probably going to get some sun and depending upon how hot it is, that could take some energy out of you. Getting to the top of Silver Pass was really, really nice. This was the first time on the trail I saw Mount Ritter, which is one of my favorite peaks in the Sierra and the second most prominent peak in all of the Sierra. And just getting to the top, seeing Mount Ritter as a familiar friend uh, made me feel like we were making good progress and I was really excited to get closer to that area on the trail. Coming in at number five is Selden Pass. Uh, what made Selden Pass really, really hard is the beginning part of it is very steep. You can consider this pass as either starting from Muir Trail Ranch, where a lot of people choose to resupply, and that is what I actually ended up doing, or you could consider it starting from the John Muir Trail Paiute Canyon Trail Junction. Pretty soon after that, it goes up for a while and it is very, very steep. I think one mile gains about 800 feet in the process and uh, that takes a lot out of you. What really made this hard for us was because we had just resupplied, we had really, really heavy packs. Our packs were back to being about 50 pounds and doing some really, really steep miles after having a light pack on the hours before was really mentally draining. 
Once um, you get past the steep bit around Muir Trail Ranch, it mellows out and gets pretty nice. And uh, the view over the top of Marie Lake is gorgeous. Really, really nice area. Coming in at number four, we have Pincho Pass. So Pincho Pass has the most elevation gain of any pass on the John Muir Trail with 3,715 feet. And that's kind of the real reason why it ended up so high on this list. Um, it's just a, it's a long hike from the Woods Creek suspension bridge up over the pass, you know, over seven miles, as I said, 3,700 feet. And you're, you're definitely feeling that. I've also found the Ray Lakes area just to be hot. I don't know if it's just been the couple times I've been there, it's been hot days or if that area tends to be really hot, but that was one of the hotter days that I was hiking. And I was definitely just, you know, that the heat was taking some of the energy out of me. Coming in at number three, we have Trail Crest on the Mount Whitney Trail. Um, while this technically is not part of the John Muir Trail, if you start the trail from Whitney Portal, you have to hike this section and it is very serious. Um, it's relentless, 7.8 miles, gaining over 6,000 feet. It just really doesn't stop. The trail is kind of rough. It's not super well maintained and that makes it a little harder. Couple that with the fact that, you know, it's the first day of the trail and you immediately start going uphill and you do not stop going uphill until you're above 13,000 feet. Both the elevation as well as the distance and the heavy pack all combined to make this feel like a slog. The 99 switchback section um, especially is definitely difficult. It just goes and goes forever and never feels like it's going to end. But once you get up there, it's glorious. You, Whitney's like in sight. You feel like you can touch it. Looking over to Guitar Lake, Crabtree Meadow, Kern Canyon, all of that's really, really nice to see. And it will definitely give you the energy to get to the top of Whitney. But while you're going up this pass, you're going to be breathing hard. You might be hating your life a little bit. Coming in at number two, we have Muir Pass. Muir Pass is a very serious pass. Um, it is the longest pass on the John Muir Trail coming in at 7.66 miles, gaining about 3,400 feet, and then topping out very, very close to 12,000 feet. And it just goes for a really, really long time. I was terrified to do this pass on my hike because I had previously hiked the North Lake to South Lake loop and I had hiked down this section of Muir Pass. And I remember going down that years ago and thinking this would be brutal to hike up. So when uh, we got this permit and we knew we were hiking north, I was like really, really dreading this. I also did this pass at the end of a 22 mile day of hiking. And so my last seven miles were doing this pass and it was just relentless and brutal and really, really, really difficult, really, really draining. Once you get up there, the Avamir uh, hut is glorious. The Evolution Valley is beautiful. I camped by Wanda Lake, which is absolutely one of my favorite places in the Sierra. It's great once you're up there, but you are definitely working to get to that view, get to those mountains. All right, number one, the most difficult pass on the John Muir Trail for me was Glen Pass. So Glen Pass is hard because it is actually the steepest pass on the John Muir Trail. The 3.84 miles gain 2,633 feet, which gives it a gain per mile ranking of 685 feet per mile, which is the most of any pass on the John Muir Trail. And I was definitely feeling it. Um, right from the start at Lower Vedette Meadow, it's super steep. Eventually that it does roll over for a little bit, um, but once it rolls over, you're above tree line, you're in the sun. Like I said before, that area is really, really hot. We topped out the pass right around noon, so it was the heat of the day. I was really, really feeling that elevation. The other part of this, I think, was because I did this on the fourth day of the trail. Um, that's always kind of just the low point for me. Usually on day four, it's like the most sore I am, the most bruised my hips are from the waist belt of my pack. Combined just, you know, not feeling good with serious temperature, serious elevation gain, and I just completely blew up. This was really, really hard for me. Um, eventually got to the top and you are greeted by the Ray Lakes on one side and the Great Western Divide on the other side, which is super beautiful. But going up there was the hardest part of the trail for me. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my rating and my experience while hiking the John Muir Trail. I made a full length video of my experience that you definitely want to check out. Um, and I also really want to hear from you. Um, what was your experience when you were hiking the trail? Do you agree with my rankings or did you have different experiences and you'd feel totally different? Please let me know down in the comments. Also, if you plan on hiking the John Muir Trail and you'd like any more information, please, please, please also reach out in the comments and subscribe to my channel because I got a lot of great California mountaineering, road biking, rock climbing, and uh, trip preparation videos coming up. Thank you so much.